uh, Baptiste Camamier is going to talk about machine learning and expressive gestural interaction. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'm Baptiste Camamier, and I'm a postdoctoral uh, Marie Curie fellow at McGill University at Technica. And, uh, and this work is also supported by the ERC project with the gesture music. So, I'm going to talk about how, in the, um, the field of gesture interaction, uh, we use machine learning in order to support more expressive aspect of, of, uh, of gestures. Um, so first, um, just a quick context of uh, gesture interaction. Uh, when, we th when we think about gesture interaction in HCI, usually we, have, we think about like simple gestures uh, with a limited number of gestures, because usually we would like to the, the user to remember all that gesture and to be able to, to learn easily that, that kind of vocabulary. And, um, and usually we use a classification method that uh, quite robustly recognize these symbols and discarding uh, most of the variation in the execution of that gesture. And uh, so my point in, that, in, the, in, in this talk is to, uh, in order to enhance uh, expressivity in gesture interaction, we have to take into account variation in uh, the execution of gestures. Variation, um, if we think about Variation in the execution of movement, we think about style, for instance. What makes someone working in a certain uh, a manner different than another? Um, that's the variation from the other person and that characterizes uh, that person, that style. Um, also, prosody in speech, changing the way we speak, we also convey different expression, different expressivity, and also different semantics. And obviously, in music, it's highly important where uh, the difference of interpretation between performers rely on the way they will uh, um, stress some moment in the, in the score, like changing the dynamics or, or the tempo, for instance. So variation conveys expression, and the, the, the idea here is to uh, use machine learning techniques as a tool to recognize gestures, but also to uh, take into account how the gesture is performed. So the first aspect we know quite well how to do it. There are a lot of classifier recognizers in the in the literature from machine learning, but also in HCI and also in other field of applied machine learning. Uh, the tricky thing is to um, track how the this gesture is performed. So I'm going to talk about that and um, put, stress a bit more the context of my research, which is uh, we've come from musical interaction. So. Um, so I talk about interpret interpretation in music, uh, in uh, acoustic instruments, for instance, piano, stress in dynamics and, and rhythm and so on. But uh, when we are, work we are working in the field of musical interaction, nine new interfaces for musical expression, where uh, you substitute somehow the instrument uh, by the technology. So in that case, uh, you kind of leave a uh, huge design space uh, for the interaction between the movement and the sound that you want to produce. And this is uh, a complex application because we are talking about a continuous relationship between gesture, the algorithm that we are using, and the sound that we are producing. So, within this context, um, the approach is to um, consider model in between the capture movements or in between the data that we can collect from any sensors and what you do with this data. So the mapping, the render, the sound rendering, but it was a visual rendering and so on. Um, and this model can be configured through data. So that's the machine learning approach. Uh, but in our case, um, we don't have a lot of data. We have limited number of data because we are working with performers, with um, uh, creative people that are not necessarily producing a huge amount of data or building big database. So we are dealing with a limited amount of data, so we need the user to kind of tune the, the algorithm in order to, to, uh, uh, to make what, is, what he or she wants to do. So I'm going to present in my talk, I'm going to present two models and two applications related to these models and then um, open to discussion. So the first model in uh, this idea of recognizing gesture and, and, and understanding how the gesture is performed is tracking variations. So tracking variations is the gesture execution. 
So the idea is to uh, record templates of gestures, which are time series. Uh, that can be, for instance, uh, some playing techniques, uh, Martelli spiccato de tache in the violin. Um, but they are data a long time. Then we uh, define a set of variations that we would like to track. So um, the speed of the performance, the amplitude of the performance, uh, some rotation, whatever. And the idea of the algorithm is then to, when a performer is doing the one, one of these gesturing during performance on stage, during concert situation, the idea is to, uh, in real time, to estimate the variations, which gestures perform in the variation. So it's something that we call gesture variation for always an algorithm based on particular filtering, if you're interested in the technical aspect. But um, I'm, I won't go into the details of the algorithm more or the evaluation of the algorithm as a method for recognition, but more as a design tool. So how we can use that kind of technique in order to uh, design um, expressive uh, gesture to sound interaction. So uh, we, um, we started, um, we, could, we built a, a series of workshops that we could form for the sound with uh, uh, collaborators, Alessandro Tavila, Scott Bobina, and Natal Tanaka. And uh, the idea of that workshop was to um, take a non-specialist, so not at all computer scientist, or uh, uh, design, uh, designer of, of interaction, of uh, sonic interactions, and try to make them building, working prototypes of gestures and interaction. And um, so to do that, we wanted to say, um, let's first start from the sound. So let's imagine what kind of action we could uh, link to a sound. So we, we uh, ask the, pers the, the participants to imagine what kind of sound they would like to work with. So a sound that marked them in the last two days, for instance. And from that sound, from that material, <clears throat> what kind of action we could imagine in order to act on that sound. Uh, so what kind of interaction scenarios we could imagine. So that's, it's quite important here because the, uh, we, we are not really designing the interaction from a technical uh, point of view perspective, but more for a really non-realistic and creative uh, uh, starting point. And, um, and once they decide, okay, this is my sound, for instance, uh, a horn sound, and these are my gestures, for instance, uh, extending the, the arms in order to, uh, to act on that song. They have to realize that interactions. So to do that, we uh, distributed uh, sensors, so they were accelerometers, and uh, software toolkits that were um, in which you could find uh, the uh, machine learning techniques. So let me show you a video in a that illustrate the, the, the workshop uh, structure. So first is the ideation. So they, they were recording sound and the situation in which the sound app was happening. <laughs> So they were vocalizing the song, <laughs> and other people had to guess. <laughs> and then they had to, to mimic what kind of interaction they want with that song. And so I just wanted to do something like. So you see that it's really non-realistic and much This one inverts and swaps the sound, so the baby starts to go like play, and the plane starts. So I'm going to show you the the results of the scenario. So at the end, they realized and they were demonstrating to the other group. So here they're trying the system with two gestures. I was controlling in real time as well. Okay. 
So what we learned from that, we learned that um, uh, a lot about the affordance of the model that we pre presented, which is, for instance, that the ID to try variation of the gesture, the, of the gesture um, was actually a good way to explore potential uh, interaction with the sound. So the, the adaptation feature of the model was an exploration feature for the users for the bad sequence. Um, and actually also, uh, the final idea was a, a gesture recognition system. We are talking about gesture with the starting point and the ending point. And this makes the people really understand what is a gesture. And uh, so at the beginning they were like <coughs> gesticulating a lot without really um, structure, structuring the gesture. And then they started to realize that, oh, I have to start and to stop and to be conscious about the trajectory of the gesture. Um, the fact that it was a recognition system also had some, some constraints about what can what can gesture we can recognize. And uh, in some project, they, they, they put the constraint of the algorithm in the physical space in order to, uh, to, to have a, bit, a more robust system. So for instance, they, in this case, they were putting the accelerator on the shoes and trying to, to have different, recognize different steps. And they put some marks in order to know, come like a choreography, where they have to put their, their feet in order to uh, to help the system to understand and to recognize. And what we learn also is like the models we develop are not mappings, they are not uh, mapping part of, they are not mappings between parameters, but more models with uh, uh, really encapsulating a metaphor in the interaction. So that's the first model. Um, and the second one that I want to present today is uh, where, um, because in the, in, the, in the previous model, the set of variation was fixed pretty, pretty fine before. So we say, okay, we can track speed, size, and so on. And um, what about learning this set of, of variation based on what the, 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 the user gives? So, so what we wanted to do is to say, okay, the user could train the system with their own variation of the gestures and then perform through it. So we took uh, the use case of music conducting that is a uh, where uh, it's a really good use case because it's quite, um, the gestures are quite known, uh, structured, the topology is clear, but the articulation of the gestures are uh, really idiosyncratic. So even at the expert level, the expert conductors um, perform different, differently um, a legato, a staccato, or a normal articulation in order to give that intention to the, to the artist. So that's a, a and a study with uh, Alvaro Sassua and uh, Atta Tanaka, and actually it's a keynote that will be uh, presented by Alvaro on Wednesday. So he will give more details that I'm doing uh, today. But uh, what I wanted to show you is um, the two steps. Um, again, we, we started by the sound. So we said, what kind of articulation you could uh, imagine, what kind of variation you could imagine if you hear this sound? So is it legato, or staccato? So the people we are training the system with the sound stimulus and no other task than that. Just perform a gesture that will um, like, um, embody that articulation. And then, so the model is trained. The model is based on the Gaussian mixture model. Yeah. And, uh, and during the performance aspect, uh, the uh, side, they started to perform the gesture and the articulation, and the model inferred the articulation. So let me show you the, a really simple. Uh, Example of variation, and then is performing. So you can continuously go from one articulation to the other. Yeah, the goal was not to train a system in order to play au de la joie, but more to uh, understand what is if we put a machine learning technique in between the gesture and the song and leave the participant to train it and to perform through it. And just a selection of results, what we found is that 
actually the variation that the, 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 the training set that it gives to the, to the system is idiosyncratic. We couldn't do a transfer of learning based on the, on the data we collected. Uh, more importantly, is not linked to the expertise because we're using musician and non-musician, and actually the training quality in terms of separability of classes were exactly the same for musician and musician. I mean, there was no difference. And something really, really important is uh, participants get better using it, um, which means that uh, the performance error that they, that they got when they were performing with was lower than the cross validation. So we are here in a, in a kind of situation of co-adaptation between the system that can be adapted by the user through uh, example of variation and an adaptation of the user that is learning through the system. So just a synthesis and challenges, maybe. Um, so what I present is a human-centered machine learning approach uh, that I think will help the design of expressive interaction. Um, OK, my time is up. But that's the, I will leave. Um, yeah, and I think the expressive interaction also if uh, challenges for machine learning. And we don't have to forget the learning of the human. Part. Thank you. OK, thank you. I just want to say something in the middle of that talk. You know, I work with Baptiste, so I know where his papers are. I, I annotated my notes on the Google Docs with links to some of the papers. But if other speakers could go back to the Google Docs and put it